Well, we've made it, haven't we? We've made it to Christmas Day 2020. Uh, what a year it's been. Some people thought maybe we won't even make it today, or at least long for the end of 2020. And we wondered whether we could actually meet here together on Christmas Day. I know others around the world don't have the, the privilege that we do this morning of gathering here. Well, we started the year here in Australia with devastating bushfires. A month later in February, then we had these widespread flooding. And then came March. And the COVID-19 effects hit Australia. Need I say anything else? On March 13, I was at Albert Park Lake waiting to get into the Formula One. I could hear some cars going around the track, but they weren't actually letting us in the gate. A news was starting to filter through that some of the drivers had actually gone home and that the race weekend was cancelled. At that point, I had no idea that I'd be standing here on Christmas Day and still not have attended a sporting event since that day. And if you know me, you know that nine months without going to a sporting event is unheard of. 2020 has been a year unlike what most of us have actually ever experienced. It's been a a painful and a heartbreaking year for many. And a year that we've learned new terms. Well, I have learned the term social distancing. I never thought there'd be a time in my life where I couldn't legally visit my parents, visit my friends, go to church here in Melbourne. It's been a year of distancing. We haven't been able to greet people with a a handshake, let alone a a hug and a kiss. We've had to stand there's 1.5 metres away from people pretty much everywhere and stand in lines. We still have store limits now of the number of people, limits in stores, in homes, in churches. See, separation and distancing have been a, a major theme this year. Our government have wanted us to be separated. Why? So those who are clean, those who are healthy, won't be infected. So we're separated. I certainly felt this separation this year, and I'm sure many of you have felt that too. Being separated from family and from friends, separated from church, separated from work or uni, school, separated from sport, separated from just too much. In fact, our kids didn't even get in the car for months because we couldn't go anywhere and there was nowhere for them to go. And so we hated the separation. And so over the last few months, it's felt like our state's gone into pause mode every time Daniel Andrews is making an announcement on restrictions. Everyone hoping that the separation would end that we could finally see our friends and our family again, that the 5K limit would end, that the 25K limit would end, that the ring of steel would end. We long for the end of separation. And it's great that we are now not as separated as we have been this year. And the end of separation, that really is the message of Christmas. Christmas is all about the the end of separation. Christmas is about the fulfillment of a promise to end separation. A separation that means we, the infected ones, can't be with a clean God. And we'll see today that Christmas is about God with us. And that's our theme this morning, God being with us. But before we get to this theme, I think it's helpful to get some background. And at the, the background starts with, with a promise. And it begins with this promise 730 years BC, 730 BC. Promised by God through the prophet Isaiah. And the context of this is what we read earlier. The Lord is speaking to King Ahaz of Judah. King Ahaz is facing assassination. He is in big trouble. And God is then challenging Ahaz to ask, ask for a sign to confirm God's promise. That God would actually destroy these two kings from the lands of the north that were currently threatening Judah. But Ahaz, he protests and like, 
No, oh, I don't want to test the Lord. But really, that's garbage. This guy, he was pure evil. He was sort of like the biggest jerk of a king. He, he didn't care about God at all. He didn't trust him. And Isaiah knows this. And so in verse 13, Isaiah is speaking on behalf of God. He says, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? So Isaiah here, he's rebuking Ahaz for trying God's patience. And then he, this is, all comes just before this amazing prophecy in verse 14, that the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. And this is a, a marvelous promise. And 700 years later, these words, they take on a, a more literal and a, and a more wonderful meaning when an angel comes and speaks to a man called Joseph. Now, see, Joseph, his world's just been turned upside down. His life actually appears worse than what, what mine has been in 2020. He's engaged and his fiancée's pregnant and he wasn't the father. Not happy times. But then an angel came to him and said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what's conceived in her is from the, from the Holy Spirit and she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And then Matthew tells us, verse 22, that, that all, this, all this took place to fill what the Lord had said through the prophet. So this is talking about Isaiah and Ahaz, what we've seen in Isaiah chapter 7. We, we are finally seeing the, the ultimate fulfillment of God's promise to Ahaz. And Matthew continues to pretty much quote word for word what God says through Isaiah. Verse 23, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So now, now we are seeing the significance of the name of this child. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. It, it means God with us. So this baby, Jesus, is given the title Emmanuel. Matthew is telling us that this baby is God himself. Jesus is God with us. So since that very first Christmas... God has just given social distance in the flick. He's end of the separation. Uh, you might be thinking, why was there this separation in the first place? Well, re remember why we were separated this year. So those who are healthy and clean, in a sense, won't get infected. To protect the clean. You can't have the clean and the infected with each other. Because the infection spreads. If I think of my kids, one of the most important things I want as a dad is for my children to make the right choices with the friends that they make. Because I know that if they get into the wrong crowds, that they can start behaving the wrong way. We say bad company, well, it corrupts good character. So I want my, my children kept apart from kids with bad character. And God also, he must have clean children. So why is there a separation between us and God? Well, it's because God is clean and he wants a clean people. You can't have infected people near the clean. And so therefore God, he demands this separation. And the Bible actually calls this cleanliness of God, holiness, holiness. God is holy, and, and we as people are not. God is he, separate from all other beings, because He alone is God. God's holiness means that He's utter, pure and perfect. He's without any sin or evil. He, his very being is the, the outpouring of purity and truth and righteousness and, and justice and goodness. 
and, and every moral perfection. This is who God is. God is a holy God. And it's this holy God who created the world, who has himself come into this world as a baby. That he could end the separation. Separation between God and humanity. The God, bet- uh, God and between God and us. You and I. And so when Jesus is called Emmanuel, it doesn't mean that everyone realized in that moment. I mean, the wise men, they certainly seem to realize. They, they came to worship Jesus as a baby. But this, this title of Emmanuel was, was pointing to the future because to a point when people would see that the things that Jesus said and did and realize that he is Emmanuel. They would realize that he is God. They, they, they would hear him teach with authority. They, they would see, see him heal the sick, calm a storm, even raise the dead. And they would realize that God has drawn near to us. Jesus is Emmanuel. God with us. And this is great news for us because it means God's actually involved in lives. He cares. And so now with with this background and context, I actually want to say two things. Two things about God being with us this morning. One, that God is with us now. And two, that God is with us in the end, at, at that most crucial part of our life. But firstly, God is with us now. This year it's been hard, hasn't it? Possibly like many of you, there were moments this year where I really struggled, where I broke down. For example, Tuesday, the 30th of June. It was announced that there was 10 hotspots, 10 postcodes were re-entering lockdown. I was in one of them. I just worked hard for six months just about to go on annual leave. We'd organized the kids to have sleepovers of both grandparents and their cousins. There was just so much happening. I actually made a calendar for the kids to show them where they were going when and how that was happening. All cancelled with one announcement. It crushed me. The kids were missing out. I was missing out. I was in tears much of the afternoon. I couldn't get work done. But, Emmanuel, God was with me. I prayed, I was supported, I was comforted. Emmanuel really made a difference. Knowing God is with me helped me hugely. I have to keep on reminding myself of this. God is with me. God helped me. He helped me to get a a much better perspective of, of all of life, much a bigger picture and not just me. I've taken so much comfort, especially this year, in the knowledge that God loves me and cares for me, knowing that God is working for the good of those who love Him. Knowing that God loves us so much that He ended the separation. Friends, God is giving us a social distancing free Christmas gift. He's given us the the free gift of relationship with Him. God with us, here and now. God's not this distant figure that has no concern for our well-being, no. Because of His great love, He sent His Son Jesus into the world. Jesus, God in the, the flesh. God has come near offering relationship to end separation. Offering to be with you now. So do you? Do you push him away? Or do you say, yes, God, be with me? And the second point is that God is with us in the end. You might be uh, thinking, actually, my life's pretty good. I actually don't need a relationship with Jesus. I've got all I need. I'm coping just fine. I don't need Jesus in my life. And yes, it is possible that you can go through your entire life and not need Jesus with you. 
while that is possible, I want to highlight that there is a day when you do need him. That if you know Emmanuel, he'll be with you in the end. As you're ready to breathe your last, he'll be there with you. And this is what one man realized. You see, although Jesus was born a baby that we celebrate at Christmas time, he grew up. He lived a, a perfect life. And ultimately went to the cross. And when he did, there was two criminals who were crucified with him. Two people who had come to the end of their lives. One of them joined the crowd in mocking Jesus. But the other recognized that he'd made it a mess of his life. And that he needed a savior. And he saw that Jesus was the one who came to save. And so, so he turned to Jesus and said, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And so, as the man was taking his dying breath, Jesus said to him, I'll tell you the truth. Today you'll be with me in paradise. That man realized on his last day that he needed Jesus with him. And on our last days, we need Jesus with us as well. You see, like this man... The Bible says we, we've all, all of us have made a mess of our lives. We are not holy like God is. If your life was played back to you, there'd probably be some of the things that you're actually pretty proud of. But there'd be other things that you wouldn't want anyone to know about. I know that's true of me as well. And this is what actually separates us from God. He is clean. We are unclean. But the wonderful news is that Jesus is the one who saves. Just as the angel said to Joseph in verse 21, that she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus, he died on the cross so, so that we could be forgiven from the mess that we've made of our lives. Forgiven for the sin that actually separates us from God. And so... We now have that same promise as that man on the cross. When we turn to Jesus, we will be with him in paradise. And so the message of Christmas is that God is coming near. He's he's offering relationship. If you know Emmanuel, he'll be with you now. And he'll be with you in the end. He'll be with you as you're ready to breathe your last. He'll be there for you. And so as we end this morning, just two things I want to say. Firstly, there's some of you here, maybe this Christmas is a time, I mean, Christmas is a time where we remember a great and a wonderful gift. But maybe today is the day you want to embrace that gift. In a year that we've had to keep our distance, let God in. Let God in. So that 2020 becomes not the worst year of your life, but the best year of your life. Because it's the year when you met Emmanuel. And that God wasn't just this concept. He was a man in Jesus who is with you. And so this is a year that that changes your world, changes it for the good. Because 2020 is the year that your destiny changed. And secondly, for those of you here who have already embraced this Christmas gift of Emmanuel, as we face 2021, there still remains a lot of uncertainties. Sydney, they're facing another wave of COVID at the moment. It could happen here. We have plans for this church to try and reach our community, but don't know what we're allowed to do. Summer's going to come sometime soon, probably. And then when it does, there could be bushfires. We'll be able to travel. I mean, especially hard now with borders closing. Will there be more unease in our world? Will, will that impact us personally? Will this conversion therapy bill pass? Will it become law? Will there be more government bills to restrict Christians praying and preaching? 
Friends, there's always going to be uncertainties. We live in a broken, a broken world. But this we know, whatever we do next year, whatever happens in 2021, in the end, God is with us. God is with us. Individually, God is with us as a church. Emmanuel, God is with us. All glory be to him. Let's pray. Our Lord and our God, we praise you for Emmanuel, especially on, on this Christmas Day. The fact that you are a holy God and that you would come down to us, an unholy people, that you would end the separation through Jesus, that, that we, by placing our trust in Jesus and accepting your offer of of relationship, that, that Emmanuel, that Jesus will be with us now and that he'll be with us in the end. And so we thank you for this most amazing Christmas gift. In Jesus' name, Amen.